What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I am bringing you the Wind Shear, aka Wind Daddy Druid. Now, this gear is only at level 8, but this is the Wind Daddy Druid. So I'm going to bring you everything you need to know from the skills, the gear, the Paragon, etc. Then we're going to showcase a, a nice little pit level at 80. This build is insane, but I'm not going to go too crazy right now. I just want to do it for the video because this build is in no way shape or form a speed running build but the build is very very fun but we are going to talk about a few negatives otherwise this build is very satisfying as a basic attack build you can use this while you're leveling up it is a very very fun and fast build so let's get into it let's go over the skill tree, tree really quickly we of course we're doing wind shear now again we're not doing five ranks into wind shear we don't need this because all of the damage from this build is a poison dot build so wind shear is applying the poison dot and that's going to be because one of uh, the legendary powers that's on our gear pieces but we don't need to invest <clears throat> the five points into this this is similar to how sork has blizzard where you take the points in blizzard the just the regular points because the ice spikes ice spikes is actually doing the damage same case here it's just poison is going to be doing the damage so we don't actually have to do any more points into wind shear if you want to you can for the initial but you don't have to all the way up to fierce so this increases our movement speed however if you wanted to you could you could take wild but you don't need it we are going to be at max uh spirit so just take fierce you're going to get more move speed it's great now we're going to go down we're taking shred here shred is going to go into shred second and third attack also performs a dash and doing additional crit strike damage if you wanted to this could really just be like raging shred to apply more poison damage if you really want this is really a flex power slot you don't actually need this for anything if you wanted to you could take it into bulwark to have even more like fortify but you already fortify a lot um you could put more points into some of your other passives like more crit strike chance or if you wanted to you could put more points into uh here into circle of life it's just to heal or <clears throat> shape shifting even more uh if you really wanted to i guess you could do petrify for even more damage but against the bosses but yeah i mean you really have a sl uh, flex slot here you could add more stuff to your wolves if you really wanted to it's totally up to you um you could even throw in a, a tornado here and there if you really wanted to but otherwise like the build itself just doesn't it's just a flex slot this is just to help you kind of dash around and get from monster to monster if you really wanted to but yeah uh next we got one point of predatory instinct for even more damage to close ranks uh for crit chance 14 ranks into the Gaiat for even more movement speed and werewolf form. This is another reason why this build is so fast. We just move all over the place. Even though we're in shape-shifting form, we get it for three seconds after. So we're going to be going back and forth in between human, werewolf, and werebear form, which is very important. It's going to scale our damage significantly. Next, we got Iron Fur for even more DR. Then we're going to come down. We're maxing out Ancestral Fortitude for the all res and Vigilance for even more DR after we use the defensive skill. We have three out of the four here, which is very important. Uh, Cyclone Armor all the way into Preserving. This is just going to allow some more damage reduction as well as like anybody who gets close, we just knock them back. We do want to have some distance, especially against the boss. Um, I'll talk about that once we get to the Paragon board. Then we got Bloody Howl into uh, Bloody Howl Preserving for even more increased attack speed we are going to be chaining this all the time with our attacks because kills reduce the cooldown so this is going to be active pretty often and then kills you know then it gives us the uh additional healing which is very important this is another way that's going to help us stay fortified uh then we got five points into debilitating roar this is huge so we shape shift into a werebear we get uh it's not DR, but we enemies deal 70% less damage to us for 4.4 seconds. This is also what is going to fortify us. So we have Bloody Roar to heal, Debilitating Roar to fortify, and we just basically are non, like, unkillable to a degree. Uh, then we got Enhanced all the way up to Preserving, right, for the increased heal. Then we're going to come down. We're due, we are taking one point into Wolves. These are just to have them. And then we got Nature's Reach. Uh, deal 15% increased uh, damage to distant enemies. Double this bonus if they have a CC effect. So this is really, really nice. This is really going to happen all the time against the bosses. This will happen sometime against the monsters when you're going through the dungeons, uh, etc. But this is mainly just for the boss. Um, one point into, iron, into wolves. You can have this. It's fine. 
Uh, next, nothing here except we are taking two points into Neurotoxin. Poison enemies are slowed. We really could take, like, maybe one of these. Like, Envenom is kind of nice uh, for even more crit strike damage against bonus enemies. You could take that if you really wanted to. Um, however, the, the, the poison damage isn't necessarily critting. But again, you could take the, the points out of Shred and put them in Envenom and just try it. Um, because we gained a 10% critical strike damage against poison enemies. This would help with just like initial damage, but that'd be it. Then we're going to come down and we're going to take Defiance. We deal even more damage against uh, elites. We got Natural Disaster. Our Earth skills do increase vulnerable damage. Our Storm skills deal increased damage to uh, CC'd enemies. Then we got Resonance. Nature Magic skills deal six times uh, increased damage. Triple the bonus if it's an Earth skill next to a Storm skill, etc. So we have Storm skill. Okay. Earth skill. Or not Earth skill, but Storm skill. So we are going to be able to get that bonus, which is kind of nice. Then we got Quick Shift. This is huge. Wind Shape Shifting. Into a new animal form, you deal increased damage up to 24%. So this is nice. We would like to have preferred ranks in this in our amulet, but I just don't have one. Uh, heightened senses when shape shifting into an animal where bear form gives us dr and then werewolf gives us movement speed and then double the bonus while they're both active which is another reason why our dr is so high as well as our move speed then we come down for our key passive guys we're taking urzine strength just for even more damage and health um if you really wanted to you could take bestial if you want um lupian's ferocity is not good earth and might isn't going to work for us in this build nature's fury is also not going to work and Perfect Storm isn't. So you could take Bestial Rampage if you really wanted to, but the additional max life is actually kind of nice. And then while you're healthy, you deal 30% increased damage. So this is pretty much always going to be active. So let's go into the skills, guys, and just, or excuse me, our gear, and break this down. But first, our boons. In our deer boon, we got Wariness for DR. You could take more max spirit if you wanted to, or gain increased movement speed, etc., but wariness is just really good. Helps us stay alive. Into our hawk, we got double boons activated. We got iron feather for even more life, as well as swooping attacks for more attack speed. Our wolf boon is going to be bolster. When we fortify, uh, we gain fortify every time we use a defensive skill. Um, there's not really another one to use here, but for bolster is just the best. And then on our snake boon, we are doing masoistic. Uh, Chris strikes have a chance to heal us. However, you could take... Overload, dealing lightning damage, has a chance to cause the enemy to emit a static charge, which is kind of nice. This doesn't happen as often, but this is totally an option. So, But I'm doing uh, Maso just because for the heal. Get into our gear pieces here, guys. In our helmet, we are rocking God Slayer. Now, you could do a normal helmet if you wanted to with some regular stats on it, like cooldown, uh, max life, and then like lucky hit or something like that or uh, an all res or anything like that. But God Slayer is kind of nice because when we stun, freeze, or immobilize, it pulls them all in. That just help us because one big negative, and it, to me it's the only negative of the build, is just there's just no AOE component to the build. So God Slayer pulls in everybody and allows our wind shears just to deal all that poison damage right up front. So God Slayer is very good. However, you could use a regular helmet. Shaco is also fine. You could rock Shaco. Totally up to you. In our chest piece, we are rocking Hectic. This reduces our cooldowns. It's mainly going to be for these three here, uh, which is very, very important and more debilitating roar duration. Then we got Edge Masters because obviously our uh, spirit is always going to be full, so even more damage there. Then we got Might for the DR because we are using a basic attack skill. We got Metamorphose. This is our only way to, be to become unstoppable in the build. So this is our only way to deal with crowd control effects or stunning or you know whatever it is and this just kind of helps us get around for a little bit more damage but that and then again guys you want the plus seven into the digit which is great then we got our staff of the moonrise moonrise here for even more attack speed and damage then we got calm breeze this is the power that wind shear now deals twelve thousand poison damage over four seconds and then on a lucky hit has a chance to fully restore, which doesn't matter. But the wind shear now deals the poison damage. Okay, so if we were to go in, you guys could see that this is 12,000 damage, right? If we go in, let's say we take the points out of here and we just put points into wind shear. You can see that the wind shear damage just doesn't change, which is why we don't have any additional ranks in there. Just, just to kind of 
show that to everybody just real quick because it doesn't you know there's no there's no additional damage that you're going to do with that uh so this is the whole power that works so you got to have this on the amulet for even more i guess if you really wanted to you could put it here but the more damage here is just better on moonrise and then we got rapid of course for even more attack speed and then we got adaptability of course for even more damage so that is the gear slots guys again armor is capped as well as res is fantastic then we're going to go into Paragon board again, guys. All this is going to be linked down in the description below, so make sure to check it out over on my Mobilitics profile. But we have Bane for even more damage against Poison, which is huge. We got Human. This is going to give us even more damage when we're in Human form, which is going to be the main form that we will be in when we cast Wind Shear. We'll go in and out, but we'll be in Human form when we're casting. Earth and Sky for even more Nature Magic damage. Keeper for even more bonus damage territorial for damage up close as well as tracker for more damage against poison enemies and the effects last 40 percent longer now the damage versus close and distant is huge thunderstruck is a huge node here our storm skills which is wind shear d has increased damage equal to 20 percent of our damage versus close and distant which is 137 percent so on our gear pieces here you can see we got damage to close damage to distance damage to distance uh, damage to crowd control, uh, damage to distance, right? So it's that's the main reason why we have all of this to just scale Thunderstruck, which makes our, our skills do even more damage. And then we also have Heightened Malice. While there's three or more poisoned enemies, we deal 45% more damage. And that is the only two legendary nodes that we actually have in the build, guys. So that's the Paragon board. Let's go do this quick little showcase. I'm just going to do an 80 again because I don't want the video to go too long. However, this build can scale very, very well. We have 80,000 life, and that is before potion. This potion is going to give me the increased attack speed and lucky hit chance. So you are virtually unkillable. And my, my thing's going off. Pause. Okay, we're back. That was my fire alarm. It looks like the batteries are going dead, guys. Uh, but yes, so we are virtually like unkillable. Again, we're only going to do an 80. This build can push very, very high before the pit changes. It was getting up somewhere around 115. So now it can probably go a little bit higher into the 120s. But this build takes a long ways to go. Again, it's not a speed build. So let's go ahead and go in and pop this. It's very, very simple to play this build. You can definitely level up with this build. It's very, very easy. All you're going to do is just pop your blood howl and uh debilitating roar all the time anytime they're up you pop them so that way we can get the scale and damage you can use cyclone just for to like push the enemies back and that's it and then you just ride but you can see how fast we are um as far as move speed the thing is that you can see just a huge lack of aoe damage it's just such a lack of aoe damage um which is just a huge negative for me it just makes playing the build really clunky to a degree. But besides that, the build is very, very fun to play. Like, again, Season of the Basic Attack builds. We, You can see we're just virtually unkillable. We got, what, 160,000 life with the Fortify. Now, a lot of people do argue when we talk about this in my live stream about... How like, well, wind shear can, it, you know, it goes through. You can see right there, the God Slayer pull is nice. Like, well, it, it pierces through, right? Like, well, that's nice, but an AOE component would be, would be fantastic. Um, because you can see right there, guys, the, the, you know, I was completely stunned and I used Metamorphose to get out. But yeah, just the, just the lack of it. And I know it's a Poison Dot build, so it's like, kind of like, well... You know, it may seem just a little too strong to have an AOE component, but it's not the worst. It's just that, like, a lot of builds just have this AOE component, which makes a, the build just slightly feel better. Especially for a basic attack build, like, Heartseeker has the victimized explosions, right? You know, Bash has the, the big wide, basically, cleave, which is really, really strong. Arclash has a wide cleave uh, when you're using those skills. Um, which is just great. I think that's great for the for those. It's just Winshear just doesn't have it just has the pierce. Which is nice. So I can hit multiple enemies if they're standing next to each other or in a line. But outside of that, ooh, he's sneaky. Look at him. He's sneaky. He's dodging my attacks. 
But besides that, it's kind of a bummer. Like, I'm missing half of the monsters when I'm attacking. So, it'd be cool if the devs did something like that to change it. But that's my only, only little tiss about it. But otherwise, the build is very, very fun. If I guess if you really, really wanted to because of the pull, I guess you could try to play the ring that pulls them in. A lot of people talk about that option. I just don't think the ring is super viable with this build. Um, I mean, but you could always try it. Again, you know, this season, I definitely encourage a lot of people just to go out and just do stuff. And just try things. But, uh, you know, certain builds. And just try to make them better. I also still got to get better about, uh, you know what I mean, going through and... Oh, wait, did I put... Yeah, Moonrise is on there. Sometimes I forget that I put the powers on. And then we can sick our dogs on them. There we go. But yeah, man, overall build, super fun. Easy, very easy to play. Very, very easy to play. There's nothing to it. As long as you get the adaptability in Moonrise and then the wind shear power, the build is just a cakewalk. Um, now when it comes to the boss, you want to try to stand back and create distance as much as possible here. Um, your wolves are only in the build to basically be fodder. It's to distract the boss from attacking you, and that way you could just attack from distance, which is pretty nice. And you can see even against the boss, like our damage is pretty good. Our damage is pretty good. The poison damage is fine. And that's it. The boss just dies, you know, but... Again, the, the AoE, the lack of AoE is what really puts this build at a negative for me. But otherwise, the damage is fantastic. Oh my god, a plus three in Venom GA amulet on the spot for the video. Let's go. Uh, so with that said, guys, this is Wind Daddy. We got all the gear to eight last night, so I'm very, very excited about it. So this build will be out here soon. But yeah, guys, again, super strong build, super fun. Uh, just lacks AoE. Otherwise, the build is great. So make sure to like the video, guys. Let's get this over 100 likes. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about the Win Daddy build. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. And as always, stay gaming. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.